we've summarized, I think, quite nicely so far that the internet definitely <coughs> gives us all strong views. I don't think anybody mm. here has a neutral opinion on the internet. Mm. Sometimes a force for good, sometimes a force for some pretty terrible behaviors, and that we haven't really figured out how to solve it yet. Uh, the four, the five of us now would love to hear from all of you. Provoke us with your questions. We'll do our best to answer them. Yes, good afternoon. Two questions. Firstly, on the question of internet ownership, uh, the big companies, Google, Facebook, etc. Um, no one would quip about having uh, ownership over patents, particularly over availability of medicines, uh, generic medicines available at much cheaper prices in the developing world. So, have we reached a point, and I'd really like to know the panel on this, where we should nationalise, as, as such, the internet companies so that they are accountable? My second question is a question of what the panel think about individual control. Uh, I'm a teacher in the 11 to 18 sector. Um, should be down if you think, but I don't think there's any justification for anyone under the age of 16 having a smartphone. There's really no need for it. Mm. And, and my third question is um, on the question of control, because I think that's very important. What do you think about individual control? Not just blocking horrible people on Twitter, but how we control the internet. Hang on. Yep. Yeah, I just wanted to ask uh, Jan, Jana, yeah. um, just for uh, qualification on the point that you were making around suicide, because actually in the UK, uh, male suicide is the lowest it's been since uh, 1981, and for female suicide rates, it's been uh, it fell from 1981 to 2007, and it's been consistent from 2007 through to 2017. So by that logic. You could actually make a case for the internet um, having prevented suicide. Um, That's or you could just say that the internet has nonsense. no impact on suicide rates. I'm actually, um, just to confirm here, I'm reading out from the website of the Office for National Statistics. Yep. So if anybody would like to challenge what I'm saying, I do have okay. the Office for National Statistics <laughs> data. Why don't you say you're uh, from Spiked and you've been uh, doing this spiked, forever? Um, Absolutely spiked, doing this forever. Do not write the but Office for National Statistics Can I just, data. I need, I need, I listen. Being a macroeconomist, a bank, can I get specific? What age group are we talking about? Is that suicide in general? Total exactly. Total I'm talking suicide. about young people being uh, bullied on the internet. Yeah, it's, it's not leading to mass suicide, I'm afraid. There's no evidence to say that young that's people well, are I, I, yeah, I don't know enough strange. about England. I know what's happening in the US, in Sweden, and many other countries. Thank you very much for your question. Sorry, I just want to make sure. Back? Can I can answer just, one of, let's just, if no, we're just, one of the we're questions just gonna he get, asked? We're just going to get one, uh, one more question, then we're going to take all of them. And we're obviously going to observe our highest standards of table manners in this room. Um, Hi, thank you for today. Uh, Julian Assange. What's your Julian Assange. Okay. Yeah. That's a new form of journalism which belongs to the internet, really. Um, so, what do we do? Like, is it dark? Is it good? Is it democratic? Do we put the guy in jail? Do we lock him? Thank you. So that's a great okay. provocative question. Let's start with the first one. Let's focus on the kids and then build out. So number one, do kids under the age of 16 need a smartphone? Views on the panel, just yes or no? No. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry. Yes, under parental supervision. No. So yes, under parental supervision. No for the other three. I say maybe. I don't, want to, I don't like telling people what to do with their kids. I think that's between the parents, parents and the kids. Ask, so, ask Bill Gates what his children are allowed to do. The funny thing <laughs> is that the tech giants, you know, chief themselves, if you look at their kids, they generally don't have yeah, access to exactly. iPads or to iPhones. Yeah. They're not on a lot of these sites and the chiefs themselves are not on these sites. And I think that should tell us a but lot. Can I, yeah. can I just answer one of the questions about the internet giants? As long as we keep it uh, No, um, it's just succinct. a very funny in, in, um, bit of information. So I heard Nick Clegg, who's now with Facebook, addressing a vast mm. crowd in California mm. in February. And he has become very smooth, slick operator for Facebook. And he said, the, own, the regulation responsibility has to be with governments. Mm. We can't do anything. Uh. 
which made me laugh and cry at the same time. That is grotesquely self-serving. Yes. Well, we all know that big tech companies, yeah. uh, and indeed all big companies, have um, legal departments and corporate social responsibility oh, yes. departments mm. where they love to talk about all the good work that they're doing. So we know that mm. you're absolutely right. Um, government plays a role in regulating. Also, the companies can regulate themselves. And then we had this question as well from the gentleman. It's not just about um, you know companies and governments. It's also our individual control. And tech companies like to tell us that we all have the power to set our privacy settings and to use the technology or not, to forbid the technology to our children or not. So I would like to go around again, I'll whip, whip around this way on the panel. What do we think about this question of control? So we know the internet has good things and bad. Is it individual, corporate, or government? I, we, I don't know, but we do need more than individual control because especially with kids, you know, yes, we parent as best as we can, but actually, kids are so much smarter about all this new stuff than we will ever be. And they are putting themselves in danger. And I find it terrifying that we are not addressing. And the number of teenage suicides prompted by what's going on on the web is a very serious issue. And I think it's really responsible to diminish that with a whole lot of numbers. We should care about our young. They are our future. And this world we've entered, I don't know how you do it, but something needs to be done. Thank you. Nigel. Well, I think the answer is all of the above. Uh, we need everybody involved in this. It is, as Ella said at the beginning, still a very new technology in the overall scheme of things. We're only really now getting to grips with what it is capable of doing. And I think we are starting to uh, address some of the more malign aspects of this. Um, it's, it's not a great situation. I mean, one of the things I do is uh, serve as a... Um, a commissioner on the Global uh, Commission for the Stability of uh, Cyberspace. And what we're seeing there is, is a worrying uh, deterioration um, in uh, behaviors and a worrying uptick in uh, cyber risk um, at, you know, amongst all forms of actor. There's, there, there is no doubt about that. On the other hand, if we look at what's happening now in the United States in the Congress, we're starting to see the emergence of some young uh, tech savvy uh, congressmen and women who are actually starting to call out the um, issues, are starting to challenge uh, the bland uh, assurances of the tech giants. And I think this, the, you know, these are things that have got to be encouraged. Thank you very much. Yana. Um, I think that it's very clear that social media uh, is addictive and it's actually it's set up to be so. Yep. And with other addictive uh, systems like gambling, we control it because we know the individual control gets clicked out of functioning. You cannot make people responsible for something that they can't uh, control. So from the moment they change the start the early Facebook things where people were more in control into something that make us addicted. It becomes like, you know, much worse than cigarettes, cocaine, it's gambling. Therefore, we do need controls and we cannot leave it to individuals, unfortunately, because I'm always very much for freedom of, um, of choice and responsibility of the individual, but not when something is purposely made addictive. Great point. Ella. I have a great belief in individual control and <clears throat> individual agency and ability to enact control and not just by using the tools that are out there, you know, that Twitter is a very flawed platform, but one thing it does have is the ability to block anonymous um, accounts, which you know, makes my life a whole lot nicer. And so I, so I do that. But also this idea of, uh, I mean, I can kind of feel the like specter of Mary Whitehouse flowing around, was, won't someone think of the children? It's, uh, and that's not being unsympathetic about the fact that uh, kids can be exposed to some pretty awful stuff out there. But I think it gets used as a means to batter the notion of individual agency and control. And um, the, the kind of contradiction I have to draw out here is that often it's uh, people of a certain amount of power who worry about the others out there who are addicted to social media or who are unable to enact their individual control. There's, uh, there's often a lot of us and them that goes on with these discussions. You know, academics and politicians talk about the fact of us, to, uh, the fact in, that we need to protect the them out there from their inability to use the internet properly. 
You know, you know what I'm getting at there. There's a kind of there's an elitism there that I think is very problematic. Or maybe it's also you know even personal experience. If you stay on Facebook long enough, it it hits your brain for the instant gratification so clearly. It hits the dopamine that you actually do have withdrawal um, reactions when you stop using it. So it's not for me or so them. It's just this is a human mechanism that is there. Some people are touched more, like with other addictions. Some people more easily get. Um, uh, become alcoholics and others, but it's really a mechanism, biological mechanisms that the tech guys are using to get us hooked onto it, mm. and that's what has to be looked at and somehow uh, regulated. So this actually as a smoker, into the I next, can tell you that's not true. This this uh, takes us onto the next question. On the one hand, we were asked if we think we need to nationalize tech companies and create a sort of public internet. I'm not even sure if we need to nationalize them. We could also just create a public internet that's an alternative to what's also out there. So if you want to get onto the addictive, uh, no rules, wild west internet, you can do that. Or you could have a sort of public one, almost like public radio versus private radio or something. That's an option. And then we had this question about Julian Assange representing a different type of journalism. So we're, we're almost taking things that existed in the analog world and going, are they relevant now? Do we need to do something new? And Julian Assange, of course, is currently facing extradition charges to the United States because he didn't just do journalism, he named people who were in war zones and is accused by the United States of putting their lives in jeopardy, which is not something the New York Times, which published the same information that he did, did. They redacted the names to protect the people's lives. So I'm just listing these are really complex issues, really nuanced responses will be required. <laughs> to the panel. Nigel, I'm going to put you on the hot seat on that one because I know yeah. it's a tough one. Well, on Where do we do it? On nationalization, I'd just like to say we in Britain nationalized most of our industry during the 1950s and it did not go well. Um, it's we, time for it again. Se se time to try it again. <laughs> yeah, similar experiences elsewhere. On Julian Assange, you wouldn't expect me to particularly be particularly sympathetic to Julian Assange and, and I'm not because it seemed to me that uh, a lot of the material that he put uh, into the public domain was not done with the honest intention of uh, revealing uh, information that was in the public interest to reveal. A large amount of that information was um, actually uh, private diplomatic correspondence that showed that the United States uh, State Department, as I know them to be, are an extremely responsible and professional and capable group of people um, doing their job and reporting things that need to be kept secret because I'm afraid you know, in life there are things that do need to be kept secret. I know of no serious philosopher who has ever argued that transparency is a moral good. You know, name one. Hmm. Um, you know, we, you know, we need to be able to maintain some degree or, you know, uh, or, or of privacy in, in terms of communications for all sorts of reasons. Um, you know, lawyer, client, confidentiality, doctor, patient, you know, etc. Yasmin mentioned this um, um, play with the title, you know, does my bomb look uh, big in this? How many marital relationships would survive? You know, uh, the husband saying, you know, yes, dear, your, your bomb does look <laughs> Big in this. It save was bomb, only, bomb. Save, bomb. save only my bomb in my Yorkshire, native Yorkshire, where such an observation would be seen as the epitome of tact. And um, <laughs> I feel we've mm. we've um, drifted ever so slightly. <laughs> I'm gonna, mm. uh, Yasmin, you were in favor of nationalizing mm. the internet. Why? Uh, because I think that, I don't know whether one uses the word nationalized, but I think we need to have a safer form of what is it? It can be a very important, very good thing. And we have to think about when the inventor, Tim Berners-Lee, says, I regret what I did. We have to think about that and make it better and safer for our children. I have to tell you one very short story. Why? And I can't answer the Julian Assange question because I really don't know what to think about him. So I'll leave that one. But there was a a very interesting, terrible case in the United States. Backpage is a classified advert internet business. They were showing kidnapped children who were being drugged and then trafficked as sex slaves in the United States. Parents found their children's faces on this classified website. 
and they had to go and find them. It's the most grotesque story. The owners of the site, so the judges for three years refused to shut down the site, although this trafficking was going on. And it was only when Congress, I think, intervened. And they, what was their, their defense? This is freedom of speech right. in that's a democracy. Rubbish, that's, rubbish. that's how bad it's become, yeah. this internet of business. It's not freedom, it's Maybe we need to have an internet that has ratings, like with films. <laughs> so you have to check in with your digital ID and do PG, R, X, et cetera. I'm going to end on that uh, very provocative note. I know we have lots more questions, but there is good news, which is that the speakers are going to be available afterwards for further chat. We're not done yet. Thank you very much to all of our speakers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI-TV.